This video is going to be discussing Bows in Witch Queen, the new expansion that's coming out, as anti barrier champions are going to be changing their mods again. So, for the next season, it's going to be anti barrier scout, anti barrier bow. I've already covered anti barrier scout in another video. If you want to see that, then I'll link that down below. I've done that a couple of days ago. But this is going to be focusing on bows. These are all the bows. I'm on light.gg, so this shows you all the bows in the game. I'm not covering sunset bows like the Vow, sort of Calamity, Hush, all that stuff's sunset but i will cover the bows that obviously aren't sunset i'll cover the legendary bows first and then i'll cover some of the exotic bows because there's not a lot of bows in the game to talk about so i may as well include the exotics at the end because these exotic bows might have unique traits with anti-barrier rounds right so anti-barrier bow has only been up once on one season and it was that long ago it's not even fresh in anyone's memory so we we'll need to remind ourselves what what good bows they are these are all the bows I've got. I haven't got loads of bows, right? But I've got enough bows to get me by, and that's the main thing. To make you understand with the bows, there's two different types of frames. There's your precision frame bows, like a cure redemption, and then there's your lightweight bows. Whisper and slab, that's a lightweight bow. Those are your two frames, and obviously there's the heavy exotic bow, but that's a different category altogether. You've just got two frames for the kinetic energy slot. You need to understand what stats are good and what stats are bad. We're going through the stats. Impact is linked to the bow itself, the frame. So you can't change that, so I wouldn't even bother looking at that stat. Then you've got draw times, obviously, super important. Draw times is a stat that you need to think about and when you're building your bow. Stability is not a stat that you think about. Accuracy is a stat that you think about, and you need to think about it depending on whether you're in a long range engagement or a short gauging, um, a short range engagement. Um, and I'll go more into that why that is. Stability is not a stat you need to look at on a bow. Handling is a stat that you can kind of look at on a bow because it states the speed with which weapons can be readied and aimed, which just means the bow will be a bit more snappier. With the accuracy, it says how well shots fired by this weapon hit their target. So if you're firing above 50 60 meters of range, your bow starts to cap out on range. I know it sounds a little weird, but bows kind of have range drop off in a sense. What it means is the higher your accuracy stat, the more likely you are to hit critical hits at longer range engagements. I'm talking about super far. Think shattered throne type distances in PvE. Think of vast areas where the targets are so far away they don't even shoot you. Think of Devil's Lair when you're outside fighting the tank when you're so far back you can barely see the snipers. You'll notice benefits in higher accuracy then. But when you're fighting in a small room, a higher accuracy bow isn't going to be so much needed. Then you're looking at a lightweight frame being more beneficial for a lower draw time. right? So then you've got like a 540 draw time, whatever, as opposed to, you know, what we've got here, 684 or even 720 you can go to. It just depends on what you're doing, right? Obviously, it's going to be fighting against champions, so we need to consider that. So those are the stats covered. Aim assist is, is linked to the, the bow as well. You can't change that, so it is what it is. Whatever it is, you know, that's going to be linked to the bow. That's the stats covered. So, in in theory, in conclusion, sorry, it's handling, accuracy, and draw time is what you're looking at. That is that is the only things. So, just to give you an example of that, if we go to finding wins, which is a connect bow, we'll cover the connect bows first. This is a precision, precision frame bow that's got high accuracy, you can see base. There's two strings, so the strings and shafts. When you're building your bow, you need to think about the string and the shaft. And you need to play into a playstyle with the bow. In my mind, there's two playstyles. The middle ground playstyle with bows don't work because it's kind of like giving you a little bit of everything but not enough of something. So you need to go into either a high accuracy bow with a highish draw time or a low accuracy bow with a really low draw time. So, say for example with Biting Winds, we go for the highest accuracy bow you can think of. Well, we're picking a string, so we go high tension string, that's the best string for accuracy in this first column. Then we're looking on the second column. This is your next best accuracy stat um, for the, the second column for the shaft, plus 10 accuracy. That gives you a plus 99 accuracy, but the draw time is terrible, right? It's 720. Here's the thing about Biting Winds that's really exceptional. It is one of the only bows that has rapid hit. Works very similar to Archer's Tempo. I don't have this bow. I wish I did. But what would happen there is 
Rapid hit will cancel out a little bit on the draw time, meaning that you still have the benefit of the highest accuracy stat ball you can think of, but with a lower draw time than 720 because rapid hit will kick in. Especially on a champ, imagine that, on, a, on, a, on an anti-barrier champ, you just keep hitting them over and over. That would be exceptional. In my world, that would be the best bow I could get. And obviously on the final column, you would you cap it out with explosive head. That gives you stagger damage. It, it does more damage to shields. That includes anti-barrier champs. It's just the same deal. Uh, an explosive head bow will do far better than what a standard bow would do. In my mind, that's the best bow I would want for me. <clears throat> but I know, I understand people are going to go for draw time. So if you want to go for draw time, you can do it. on a, Even on a bite wind. So you will go elastic string so now we get our draw time to 612 we would then go for a draw time masterwork fully masterwork it of course to get the this stat but not only that we've got rapid hit on top of that so then this bow is now um it's, a, it's an exceptional bow and it's still got that accuracy because i've still got the fiberglass arrow shaft i mean it's rng what what shafts and strings you get so it's a little bit pain it's a pain to build a bow like that you just got to sort of go with what you've got like for example my biting wins i've had it for the longest time and i've never had another one really i've never had one with explosive head so mine's got no distractions explosive head it's good bow but no distractions is a waste i don't need this in pve so that's the thing but anyways those are going over that so i'm not going to talk more about the strings and the shafts i've talked enough about it i mean i might mention it on the lightweight frames as well um but <clears throat> that's the deal with that obviously that's the god roll for biting wins that's biting wins covered we're still in the kinetic slot so this is a cure redemption it is a precision frame bow same deal i've got funnily enough the same roll no distractions explosive head the only one i own if we go to here this is this bow you can get it from garner of salvation so that's where it drops from notice it's high accuracy start right away and it's high aim assist it's just because of what type of bow it is obviously high draw time so as I said, I'm not going to cover the, sh the shafts and things because I've already done that. The same logic where I've just said applies to pretty much all the boards. It just depends. Are you going for draw time or are you going for accuracy or handling? So the best rule you can get on this is Archer's Tempo Explosive Head because Archer's Tempo decreases the draw time as it states. When you're hitting a champion over and over, you'll keep that going. So at that point, your draw time is irrelevant. So if you are finding a long-range engagement, having a high accuracy stat bow with something to decrease the draw time helps out explosive it as a stated it will do in immense damage to shields it should two shot a shield two to three shot a shield at least i don't know that for certain because i haven't played anti-barrier bow for the longest time so that's the best role for a cure redemption it's very similar to buying wins to be honest if you've got a good buying wins you don't need to farm this one right you know, it, it, they're both in the kinetic slot, so they don't give you any benefit from elements. You know, they're, they're just a kinetic bow. So what else have we got for bows? So for the kinetic slot, there's also Whisper and Slab. Whisper and Slab is completely different to the other two. It's a lightweight frame. My role is Archer's Temp or Vorpal Weapon. I've got a Relenting on there, but I don't obviously want to use that. I want to use the Vorpal. This is a really good bow. I need to infuse it, but um, you'll notice its accuracy stat is way less. Right, so this is what I was on about. The frame dictates accuracy, it dictates impact, a lot of things. You can obviously build up on that, you know, accuracy. So, you know, you put in all the stuff, you can get it to 66. That's not even base stat of the Accured Redemption. You know, it's, so that just shows you the difference. And also, it would be costing the draw time. So, I think with a ball like this, it's not the play style to do. You will go elastic string. Um, and then the masterwork draw time, get that draw time down. Then for the pair combination, Archer's Tempo, Vorpal Weapon, which I have. So this this is just going to make the bow really snappy. It's got a high handling stat as well, so it's going to feel that. You're going to get a damage bonus from Vorpal Weapon, which is 20% against, um, you know, bosses, which includes champions. The Vorpal includes every ad apart from red bars. Orange bars, yellow bars, ultras, champions, all of it. The Vorpal's very useful on, on, the, on this. So this bow is exceptional. If you have Whisper and Slab like this, you keep hold of it. It's going to do a lot of work for you. I love Explosive Head, but Vorpal Weapon's amazing as well. You would obviously put a Major Spec in here. The Major Spec does additional damage for the champs, you know, and orange bars and stuff like that, but not bosses. 
Um, so that's Whispering Slab covered. As you can see, it's, it's a different type of board. Its accuracy stats way low. It won't be able to do what Biting Winds can at longer ranges, but it will do decent at medium distances. It'll, it, you won't feel any sort of um, where you're at a disadvantage because it's just when you go to super long range distance at that point. So that's kinetic bows covered. Now we go to energy bows. There's quite a couple, so I'll cover the first one, which is arc. So this is arsenic bite 4B. I have one or two rolls, I believe. So this one roll here's got dragonfly, explosive head. Exceptional. What else have we got? We've got one here as well. Rampage, explosive head. These are the two god rolls that you want. Now it's up to you which one you want to choose. So if I just go here, explain it all. So this is a as I say, a, a more of a lower draw time type bow, and that's the play style you want to play with it. You know, elastic string, do the draw time, get a bit of accuracy. I always think a little bit of accuracy, is to, you know, just a little bit, just to top it up is good. And then the thing about Dragonfly is this on bows. Dragonfly is very strong on a bow. Dragonfly is based on the impact damage of the shot. With the bow being high damage shot as it is, this means Dragonfly is stronger on a bow than what it is to maybe a hand cannon or a scout even because of the fact that it's based off its impact damage. So Dragonfly is very underrated on bows. You could go Rampage for the damage bonus. The only problem is you're not going to keep Rampage up that much on GM ads. Right? Um, but I'm not saying it's bad because obviously in the second column you can go explosive head, so you can go explosive head rampage. There's arches tempo, but that's a big no-no because you need the explosive head. You could go arches tempo rampage, sure, but that's not that good anymore. Then, like it's not good GM wise. So rampage explosive head is amazing. They stack together these two, or the dragonfly explosive head. That's my go-to rule because. It, the, the Dragonfly, even on GM, it does so much damage to other ads. It's really good. If you haven't got this roll, then try it out. That's the roll I, I say, either or. It's up to you. you the Rampage, Explosive, I'm not going to argue with somebody over that. That's Then it starts to be all play style, but definitely one of those pair combinations on this board. It's really good, really good snappy bow. One of my favourite bows in the game, maybe the favourite, for Legendary-wise at least. And it's Ark. So moving on now. Now we'll go to the Imperial Needle. I only have one of them. Mine's got Sneak Bow Frenzy, which is not the God Roll. But I'll show you what the God Roll is. You can still get this now, this bow as well. This season. So this bow is more of a lightweight frame. You can tell by the stats of it. I believe it is at least. Check it. Yeah, it's a lightweight frame because of its low accuracy and things. But higher handling. High aim assist. Notice it's aim assist off the charts. But here's the thing with this bow that I've noticed, when you're fighting at long range engagements, because of its low accuracy stat, especially if you don't get the high tension, it, you're kind of screwed. And even if you do have high tension, you're at a cost because of draw time. However, in the perk pool, you can overcome that. Um, we'll go for the plus 10 accuracy. I believe that would be the best, best option. So you get at least 70, so it feel a little bit better. And then, Archer's Tempo. There's impulse amplifier as well. Impulse amplifier states massively increases projectile's velocity speed. I've noticed this is a thing. It works on bows, yes, but it's not as good as Archer's Tempo. It's more novelty. You do feel the bow like sort of different. It's hard to explain it. I've only played it a couple of times, the impulse amplifier version of this. I, I still think the Archer's Tempo is just more useful overall. It's a better perk, so you go with that. And the final column has nothing good to your only frenzy because it's a weapon damage bonus and it happens automatically after so long when you're in combat. That is it. Which thus is going to break a champion shield quicker. So frenzy is the go-to. If you have the void imperial needle with archer's tempo or frenzy, you will reckon champions. It's as simple as that. It's an exceptional bow. This. It just it suffers at the range. But if you get mine, my bow probably doesn't have these stats, the right strings and the shafts. It's funny because the strings and the shafts really do help the bow, depending on what you're doing. Or if you want the faster draw time, you know, you go draw time and then you go elastic string and then you go that way with it. But notice the accuracy. You'll find it's just not as good long range. But short range, it's okay. Middle range, it's okay. 
So that's Imperial Needle covered. Now we'll go to Tyranny of Heaven. So Tyranny of Heaven I've got Archer's Tempo Rampage. It's a decent roll, don't get me wrong, it's good. And it works, it only just works, mind you, for Overload Champions. I'm surprised it even does, but it does. Rampage obviously isn't going to be proccing on champs, so I'm going to be basically without that. It's only for adds, but in GMs you don't want that. You don't, you're not going to have the benefit of Rampage. It just isn't that good of a perk like it used to be. However, there is a better role than that, which I haven't got, but I can show you. We go here. Um, this is a precision frame. Uh, no, it's a lightweight frame, bro. Sorry. The sights on it are weird. There's no sights. It's just a red dot. That's something I don't like. That's one complaint about this boy. It doesn't feel as nice as what Arsenic Bite does. Even though it's a raid bow, it's from last week and stuff. I'm just not a fan of it. But if I did get Explosive Head at Archer's Tempo, I would feel a lot better about it. It's just because I don't have it. So if you have that, which is the... I, I thought it was the Curated Roll. It says here the Curated Roll is Snake Bow Dragonfly. So that's interesting. But no, Archer's Tempo Explosive Head is the roll that you want. So you're getting the damage bonus. You're also getting the draw speed down. And then, you know, whichever way you want to go with the strings and shafts, it's up to you. Depends on what you're doing. But... That's Tyranny of Heaven. It's a solo bow, so it's the only solo bow I have power, so it's important you get a good one. I still need to get one, and I haven't got one, so I need the explosive head, really. That's the bows covered for uh, solo, for Tyranny of Heaven. Now we're coming to a super popular bow, and people love this bow. Like, I, I haven't seen anything like it where people are going on about this bow, and, and I'm like, why? Why are they doing that? Well, I kind of like it. I like it myself. I'll tell you the rules I've got. So I've got Impulse Amplifier Frenzy. I've already discussed about Impulse Amplifier. It's kind of decent, but kind of there's other stuff that's quite better than it. I've also got Impulse Amplifier Frenzy again, but this I need to look at the uh, my shaft and the strings, to be honest. I'm not sure the difference. Um, here's another one, Shooter Loop Frenzy. So this is my god roll, if so to speak. This is the roll that I really like. But I've also got... Another roll, this is the last one, here we go, Harches Tempo Frenzy. So I've, these are my two best ones, Harches Tempo Frenzy and Shoot to Loot Frenzy. So there's a couple of different god rolls, it depends on how you want, what do you want from the bow? That is the question. The, the, the argument of god rolls in Destiny, um, you can't always say, because a different person has different needs, depending on what they're playing and what they're doing. There's God Rolls, so to speak, generally speaking, but a God Roll to me is better to, than to someone else, and I'll explain, that, I'll explain why. So this is a high accuracy bow, you can see by the stats on it. Aim assist is a little lower than the rest, notice, but as I said, it's high impact, high accuracy, and it's draw times higher, naturally. That's just naturally how it is. You'll find it's, it hits really well, so let's just see what um, accuracy we can get on it. We can get the 99, so it's like Bite wins this, but it's in the energy slot and it's arc. So Wolf Tone draws amazing that way. What you could do is put Archer's Tempo Frenzy. So Archer's Tempo would negate the draw time. You'd obviously have to have a draw time masterwork, hopefully, that you do. That would bring that down. Archer's Tempo would bring that down, and you'd still have the 100 accuracy, which would be insane. Which I still don't have a 99 accuracy, but as I was saying. But if you do. You'll see how good it is at longer ranges. But you could uh, obviously go for the draw time as well, the elastic string, and bring it all down. The string makes a huge difference on these bows. But that's one rule anyways, Archer's Tempo Frenzy, which I believe is a 9 out of 10 rule. But I believe there's a rule maybe better. There's some unique situations in PvE. Shoot to loot. Shoot to loot says when you shoot a brick with your ammo, which is infinite primary ammo, so you have the time to do it. When you shoot that brick, you get any ammo picked up, the, the purple box or the green, whatever it might be. You can shoot that safely from a location that you might be fighting from. So shoot to loot Frenzy would be amazing. So you get the damage bonus of Frenzy, so you can break the shield easily off the champ. And if there's a brick next to the champ, you can shoot that and continue to do damage with whatever weapon you use. It might be Arbalest, whatever it might be. This is an insane combination. But Dragonfly is another one, so people like Shoot to Loot Dragonfly, because the reason for that, I've always stated Dragonfly is an amazing perk on bows because of its, it does more damage with a bow, just because of how it works. But Dragonfly also counts as Shoot to Loot, so if you kill an enemy via Dragonfly, it will pick up the brick. There's 
A con to that and a pro. The pro is you don't need to think about ammo so much. The con is if you want to save ammo on the floor, you can't because Dragonfly picked it up for you. So I'm going to give you an example. Say you've got eight rockets in your Galahorn or seven rockets and you've used one already and you're on six. You kill an ad, the ad drops a brick, you get one because your max reserve is seven. That means you've just wasted three rockets in total. Whereas you could have saved the brick on the floor, spent a couple more rockets on ads, then picked up the brick when you wanted to with the shooter loot frenzy. So here's the thing. It's, what I'm trying to say is Dragonfly shooter loot's a wasteful bow. It's a very good bow, but it's wasteful. The best rule in my books is shooter loot frenzy, but I'm just being nitpicky. Honestly, any of these rules are going to do you well, but the, the Dragonfly ain't benefiting you against champs. I'm just going to say it. The frenzy is going to benefit you against champions. So this is why I'm saying that's the best wolf tone draw to me. And that's what I recommend. Uh, in getting. But you could have both rolls. If you've got them both and keep them both. That's wolf tone draw um, covered. Now we move to the last bow. You point at the stag which is from an iron banner quest. If you've done it in the past you better pick it up from collections. This is a fixed roll. You can see I've got it. It's arc based. I mean we're, we're, we're spammed with arc bows. But it's just how it is. So it has, well, every roll's the same. So it's got elastic string, natural fletching, no distractions, archer's temp, or vorpal weapon, eye of the storm. In other words, there's a PvE roll in it and a PvP. Just depends on which way you go. Obviously for PvE, you're just going to go archer's temp or vorpal and forget about the other perks because that's what you want for champions. Vorpal weapon's going to do increased damage against the shield. You're going to be able to break the shield faster. And you're going to get increased draw. The draw time's going to go down because of archer's tempo. It's a high accuracy stat bow. Look at the aim assist. Pretty decent. Accuracy really high. Even the handling's high. On a bow like this, the handling's really good. So overall point of the stag's going to feel really like a middle ground. It's going to be like a biting winds type bow. Like a wolf tone draw if you like. But it doesn't have the shoot to loot yet. It has vorpal instead. So pull out your collections if you haven't got a good wolf tone. Or if you forget to get the wolf tone before it goes, then you can pull out point of the stag. So that's all the bows covered. So now to cover the exotic bows. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is Leviathan's Breath. Leviathan's Breath has unstoppable shot built into it. When seasonal mods come round, if there's an additional mod, like say if it's Overlord Sword, like it is this season, if you put Overlord Sword with Lament, it doesn't work because Lament has anti-barrier anti built into it. But the Overlord doesn't work on Lament, and it'll be the same for Leviathan's Breath. So you won't be able to use Leviathan's Breath with anti-barrier. So forget about it. I won't talk about it, but obviously it is good on it is decent on stoppables, but there's far better options in the game, and its buff isn't enough. The catalyst isn't enough. It needs more of a buff than what it's got. Yeah, that's just how I feel about it. So the rest of the boys, Trinity Girl. So Trinity Girl is um, a ad clear bow, right? Basically, once you get the perk Lightning Rod to proc, um, when you get the catalyst, any any kill will then proc lightning rod and then you get this chain damage across ads. The only problem with that is this. Um, it's never been good on overload champions. So I don't see it being any better on the um, anti-barrier champions. If it, if it, if bows are decent anyways, even without the buff, where you can still at least break the shield on your own, then Trinity Girl might have a place. But other than that... I mean, when you've got Lightning Rob procced and you do it on the champ, it might one-shot the shield. So it might be good that way. It just depends. So we have to see about Trinity Girl, whether it's going to be good or not. I'm not sure. It is good on Ad Clear, but just on Grandmaster content, not so much. Now we go to Tycho's Divination. The Tycho's, I can tell you right now, it's, it's okay on Overlords. It bugs Overlords out a little bit. You've got to be careful with how you do it. But for Ad Clear, even in GMs, it's insane. It's, in, it's an exceptional Ad Clear bow. Maybe the best or the second best, it just depends on how you look at it. So it says, Sacred Flame. If firing this weapon fires multiple tracking projectiles, target, targets marked by these projectiles explode upon death or when stuck by another Sacred Flame's explosion. So you can hip fire everything, by the way, when you hip fire it auto targets. It looks like your game's literally, it looks like you're cheating. That's how bad it looks. It actually looks like you're cheating when you're using this bow. And it marks all the targets and auto hits them. It hit scans them almost. Then you do a fully drawn shot and then it explodes. 
right now imagine that on a champ on an anti-barrier champion he'll just he'll probably might one shot them or two shot them because here's the thing the sacred flame perk will act as anti-barrier just like le monarch's poison acts as overload rounds or um malfeasance cluster bombs act as, as overload rounds and so on and so forth all these exotics have unique pairs with the anti-barrier so i can see take takers being one of the best choices for next season for anti-barrier bow now we'll uh, move on to the last two bows le monarch le monarch could be number one in the exotic slot i don't know it's going to be between this and takers because we already know i've used it many times for overload champions it's poison arrows so the poison damage will count as anti-barrier so i can foresee this in my mind where the poison will just one shot the shield off even on grandmaster that's my prediction we'll see how it works but i think the monarch's going to be insane because if you're just keeping an anti-barrier over and over they're poisoned as soon as their shield comes up the poison's going to slowly take off that shield even if you're not hitting that champ the so monarch's going to be insane like flat out lastly wish ender this is the one to maybe look out for it depends last time wish ender was anti-barrier was when it was bugged it done triple damage it was ages and years and years ago i can't remember when it was but anyways it doesn't work on overload champions but it might work on barrier and this is why it has a perk called broadhead the piece and arrowhead that damage the target on entry and exit one shot can over penetrate multiple targets when you use this bow it's almost like having a bow with explosive head the unfortunate thing is broadhead doesn't work on the overloads properly and they don't stagger continually so it's weird it doesn't work right but if it does work on barrier champions which it should because it's a piece and arrowhead think of armor piercing rounds and art rifles how that buffs that well this is going to buff a bow and it works different on bows because they're single target shots so i can see the wish ender being an amazing bow on barriers because of this broadhead what it says piece and arrowhead it's basically like an explosive payload bow um and if it's taken champs or whatever then it's going to buff it even more because it's got this um it's an i taken fletching whatever it's called and obviously you can see through behind walls and things like that but that's not what i'm talking about here it's the broadhead i'm talking about the perk so that will also be a good bow but oh i think it will be that's my prediction well, mainly this video is for the legendaries, of course, and obviously the monarch and tigers. But that was the video on the boars. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.